2021 to order. If you would please stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Council Member Shippers. Here. Ellen Bass. Present. Ingalls. King. Here. Mayor Focus. Here. And it is time if we could get a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I'd make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. Council Member Ellen Bass. Yes. Ingalls. King. Yes. Shippers? Yes. Mayor Falcons. Yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> At this time, we'll open the floor for our first public comment this evening. Seeing no one, well, I see someone, but seeing no one coming to the podium, <laughs> uh, we'll close public comment and move on to the approval of the consent agenda. And this evening, we do have the minutes from our regularly scheduled meeting on July 19th, along with a special meeting that was held on July 26th. here for the one meeting okay somebody else would someone else like to make that motion please I'll make a motion to approve the consent <laughs> agenda as presented support House member Ingalls King yes shippers yes Ellen Bass yes mayor Falcons yes motion carries okay this evening we do have a community spotlight so I'll turn it over to you Marcus uh, thank you, Mayor and members of the uh, City Council. Uh, this evening we have a community spotlight that will be an update uh, from the Alliance for Economic Success. And before I introduce them, just wanted to very quickly uh, refresh City Council uh, and the public under our City Council Strategic Priority Programs and Projects uh, that's a part of our overall budget uh, document itself. Uh, number nine is called... Uh, improve capacity to encourage and facilitate local economic development. Uh, and then underneath that, and it's probably one of the largest items that we have, it's really a catch-all for a lot of the good work that uh, City Council does in, in, the, in our city and, and staff. Uh, we have uh, right now 17 bullets that identify uh, a whole variety of, um, of things that, that are sort of already underway uh, to one degree or another. Uh, and working uh, with AES as they... Uh, transition themselves into a, uh, uh, like an uh, EDC uh, economic development corporation um, or uh, an EDO economic development organization is one of the things that uh, is bulleted bulleted in our document and I can get into all the um, all the details if you'd like me to we would uh, like you to do but that. Uh, it's all available online uh, and they're here uh, this uh, this evening essentially to reintroduce themselves uh, to the city uh, and we're anticipating them coming back uh, probably sometime later next month uh, with a proposal for us to consider uh, in terms of entering into a more formal agreement with them for services that, services that they provide. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, I would like to introduce Lisa or Kelly or Mark or Caitlin. They're all here representing the group. So, Kelly? Good evening, everyone. Thank and you. so many of my friends, hello. Um, I am the chair of the uh, Alliance for Economic Success, Kelly Smith. If you don't know me, I'm the Baker College president. Um, and I've been the chair for about six years. Uh, it's been a heavy load at times, as many of you know that are chair of boards. Um, AES was actually in Benzie and Manistee counties for about 10 years. Um, and when they, dis during the, that time, they came over here we saw such great things happening and we knew that we needed some economic development support and so they had agreed to take on um, Wexford in Masaki County uh, for a fee and we gathered about seven or eight local employers including Baker um, and were able to raise fifty thousand dollars over th you know for three years so hundred and fifty thousand total 
from just those seven to ten businesses um, to support some work here in Wexford County. And we'll be talking, one, one of our group will be talking in just a minute about um, quickly our annual report. And uh, we just know the importance of partnerships. So we're going to talk to you about all the partnerships that we've been building to make this um, a very logical part or piece of the puzzle for the work that all the great work that's going on here not only in the city but the greater Cadillac area and so I'm very excited about that and as Marcus said we'll probably be back in a month we are making our rounds to businesses and uh, units of government um, for an ask uh, for their support because we will be uh, available to do some work uh, with you regarding who knows what? Lots of dreamy things. But anyways, I want to introduce Mark Loggerway. And Mark, um, as you know, worked at Baker. He retired on August, or May 30th, not August. And But prior to that, um, we allowed him to do some work in AES because our executive director had taken another job. That's Lisa. Uh, and so he has really been moving forward with these partnerships. And he's going to start by telling you some of that. Thank you, Kelly. Um, thank you for listening to us for a few minutes today. Um, and my work at Baker College, I did a lot of business development, working with apprenticeship and workforce training and that type of thing. And one of the things I did while I was there is I served on the board of the Northern Lakes Economic Alliance, which is an EDO, much like what we are hoping to become. So uh, a much larger with a multi-million dollar impact in their community. And the whole idea is uh, in their case, their model is a partnership with Michigan State University, uh, their Community Food and Environment Institute. Uh, and NLEA has been doing that for well over a decade, very successfully, where the, actually the executive director of NLEA, David Emil, before him Andy Hayes, is an employee of M MSU. Uh, for that institute. So that's the model we're, we're putting into place here. We've uh, completed our agreement uh, with MSU uh, and um, we're pretty excited about uh, taking this model and really making it work here. Um, it's all about partnership. I think that's what's so important. What EDOs do is um, they collectively uh, address multiple issues that any one entity can't necessarily address on its own. And, and that's, that's how we think with, we, we can marshal our resources together to, uh, to have more impact in all of the areas of economic development, whether it be in placemaking or uh, broadband or housing or workforce. All these things, daycare, all the things that we need in our community are, and there's a, f a great deal of funding available out there uh, to, to pursue that. So we're just excited about the fact that we have a partnership and we have another partnership that we've developed and that is with the Cadillac Area Chamber of Commerce where we have a memorandum with them and so we're trying to bring all these entities together to really address uh, the needs of Wexford and Misaki County. So I'm going to turn it over to Caitlin to just talk about the partnership from that perspective and I have more copies too of the annual report of Good evening. Sorry, Lisa, you'll have to rise it back up. <laughs> Caitlin with the Cadillac Area Chamber of Commerce. And as Mark indicated, our partnership with a local EDO is critical. At the Chamber, we really thrive to drive business forward. And we do that in a lot of ways by breaking barriers that keep our businesses from doing that. And in the past number of years, that's been through connection, exposure, and advocacy. Well, in a lot of ways, there's a lot of things that are holding our businesses from moving forward nowadays. Housing, childcare, infrastructure, the number of things that he just mentioned, and we can't do it alone. While we do want to continue to provide the publications, networks, connections, and the advocacy for our members, we would be limited in the capacity to take on any one of those by ourselves. So in February, the Cadillac Area Chamber of Commerce reached out to the AES and we said, we are willing to support you in your initiatives to reboot and to restart. In that support, I'm here to encourage, I'm here to rebuild. We're here to provide our, our resources and our staff time to make sure that they can be successful through, through this tr transition. Because alone, 
we will be able to conquer some of these barriers that are keeping our businesses from moving forward, but also be able to establish an entity that we can all rely on in the future. And we're looking forward to that. So th I appreciated the opportunity to come and hang out. But if you had any specific questions about what our partnership looks like, please reach out. It's been a growing initiative, and as they develop, we get to develop as well. And But we're super thankful that we won't be having to lead some of these things, but we can be part of a solution, a support partner for these issues of talent, pipeline, housing, that are keeping our businesses from hiring people at this time, from being able to bring on the resources that they want. We don't want to see our members struggle in that way, but alone, we wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, Lisa, our executive director, has worked on a number of these initiatives on a one-on-one -on -one basis this past year. She works with government entities and partnerships specifically, and in the annual report, she lays out a lot of what those specific partnerships were, but she, she can describe in more detail what each one of those looked like. So, as Kelly said, I have taken another full-time role, but because I believe in this work and I believe in all of the things that we've accomplished so far in the time that um, I've been with AES since 2017 um, and helped with the transition into Wexford and Misaki counties. I stayed on um, from September when I gave my notice till I'm still staying on, so I'm still here um, because it's important to have some continuity as we make these transitions and build these partnerships. So um, it's been really important for me to see this succeed because I live just north of here. Um, I have grandkids that live in Wexford County, so uh, this is this is passionate for me as well. Um, and I just want to touch on a few things during, um, I know that I've been before you a few times now, and you've seen some of the things that we've accomplished, but I'm just going to flip to some of the quick um, stats just to kind of give you our impact so that you understand, um, you know, what we've, what we've uh, done in partnership with the other agencies around here that support the different economic development initi initiatives. Uh, during 2020, we worked with 501 businesses. That is some of them more than once, some of them only once, but we worked with 501 businesses uh, in the Wexford and Misaki area and so, you know surrounding out county, not just in the city or in Lake City or some of those urban areas. Some of these businesses are kind of out in the rural areas by themselves and they needed support during uh, the tough times like anyone else. We've worked with 36 different government agencies or entities and we have 427 staff hours assisting partner agencies. So that should be a good indicator of our ability and willingness to collaborate. On the next page, I'll just summarize the big number. We've brought a million dollars back into the community through different grant dollars and different initiatives that we've been part of as far as rolling grants into businesses or leveraging multiple resources together to help um, make the money grow. So we're really proud of the numbers in that regard. Um, and then this is just a screenshot of the map of, just to give you an indicator that we cover quite a, a large area. Um, as far as we've touched businesses or, or community agencies in multiple um, parts of the county. The next page are some of our grant awardees. I know that you folks are very well aware of our involvement in the um, income study and our partnership with uh, the lofts and different things involved there. Uh, we appreciate all the collaboration. Uh, Mark recently resubmitted a grant to the DNR to help with the quality of life um, components as far as building the trails and things like that. So we're hoping to see that move forward. Um, it's, this, it's really exciting times, but I think the most telling um, slide on here actually is this one that has the logos of a lot of our collaborative organizations. We partner with a lot of state, federal, local organizations, the nonprofits, the for-profits. We're just trying to be out there and be available. And it's, um, it's been, it's, I think it's proven itself based on our statistics. I think that we can show that um, we're able to work together really well and efficiently, and we're able to build um, that economic growth engine that this area needs by collaborating and working together. Uh, the report's available also online. If you want a digital copy, we can provide that. Um, are there any questions? I think um, toward the back you can see some of our partners, um, people that have either contributed or folks that we've uh, worked with on a project. Um, obviously some of the uh, grant name information and some of the folks that we assisted is 
um, confidential, so we don't have all of those folks listed. But then just before that, you'll see our board and the staff that worked on our team last year. Some of them were contractual on a case-by-case -case basis. Some of them, um, you know, helped, uh, like we have a staff accountant that works for another firm, another agency, so it's a contractual relationship. But you can see our board. Our board's had a little bit of changes. We have a couple of new board members. Doug DeYoung is on our board now for consumers. Um, he replaced Eric. Gustad, who served many, many years along with Kelly, and um, uh, Jeff Bassett from Forefront is also has also joined our board as the treasurer, and he's helping uh, move that piece along as far as our um, different uh, accountability pieces and things like that, and, and is heavily involved in our financial aspects. So there are local folks that you can reach out to if you have questions besides me. So. I'm not going anywhere, so um, because I want to see this succeed, I'm available on whatever they'll need to help transition this through. I, I live in Fife Lake and I'm doing a project, a redevelopment project there that is economic development. So I want to see a anything that Mark or Caitlin or Kelly or any of them need, I'm happy to be available and we're, and we're continuing this, um, this fashion until we can get the MSU partnership completely uh, move forward so any other anything thank you. I just want to say thank you for coming and and um, I so appreciate uh, your collaborative spirit and your determination to continue to make a difference moving forward and you know and what I'm hearing you say today I you know it's a just a re-enlightenment of the work that you've done in the past and so um, wishing you the best and we look forward to working with you too Thank you. We really appreciate the kind words. We love the partnerships. I like working with everyone because I'm a people person. So um, I like to see progress. So, I, you know, and I, again, I have grandkids here too. So I like to see um, a good future for them. So okay. thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> this evening we do have a public hearing. And so, again, Marcus, I'll let you introduce yep. that. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, mm -hmm. members of the City Council. Uh, our public e uh, public hearing this evening uh, is with regard to the adoption of an ordinance that amends our city zoning. Uh, John Wallace, our Community Development Director, uh, is going to be manning the station uh, from the, the staff desk tonight with the microphone there. Uh, John, if you could walk us through. This was previously introduced uh, at your last council meeting. But, John? Thanks, Marcus. Yep. Uh, I'm basically going to follow along the council communication. I think it really capsulizes the basic components uh, of this rezoning. Uh, Christopher and Jennifer Jakai of 7365 Bronson Street, uh, southeast in Ada, Michigan, filed an application to rezone their property at 2713 Sunnyside Drive from the R3 zoning district to the TS2 zoning district. The Planning Commission uh, held their public hearing on June 28th and voted unanimously to recommend uh, approval of the rezoning to the City Council. Uh, the location of the lot, it's just a single family lot. It's located in the uh, West Side uh, Tourist District right near the junction of uh, M115 and M55. Uh, the, the lot is currently developed with a single-family home, and uh, it's in an area that also is, uh, has a few other single-family homes as well as some uh, commercial properties. The uh, existing R3 zoning district, which is what the, lo the lot is in now, is intended primarily uh, just for low-density single-family homes. The district that they're proposing to uh, change the zoning two, which is the TS2, is designed to accommodate uh, those activities necessary to service tourist needs, including retail activities, tourist accommodations, parks, recreation, and public uses of general interest to the tourist. Um, the proposed uses by the application are to be used as a residence and potentially as a uh, short-term vacation rental. The existing land uses surrounding the site uh, are shown in the, uh, the report. Uh, it shows it uh, with a few nearby single-family properties, uh, but also a collection of different types of uh, commercial uses uh, in, the, in that area. Uh, the <coughs> case that makes 
probably the thing that makes the strongest case for the rezoning is the surrounding uh, zoning districts for this property. If you also look at the uh, report, you'll see that pretty much uh, surrounding the site is other TS2 properties, which would make it very consistent with the uh, surrounding uh, properties uh, in that area. So in, in summary, in, in consideration of the existing zoning, the existing land use, and the city's master plan, it is the staff's recommendation that the proposed rezoning be granted. Uh, past planning as well as current planning has this area of the city being planned for tourist-oriented uses. And creating tourist-oriented housing options near tourist-related commercial businesses is a compatible arrangement. Uh, there are sufficient public services to support any of the permitted uses in the TS2 district uh, at this site. And so staff recommendation would be uh, to approve the resolution to adopt the ordinance amending the, the city zoning map. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll open the floor for, uh, we'll open the public hearing and would invite anyone to come and speak for or against uh, or um, to provide some input uh, for the council on this subject. And this public hearing is just, or this public uh, um, speaking opportunity is just for this public hearing. <coughs> Seeing no one coming forward, we'll close uh, public uh, comment for the public hearing and move to any discussion from the council, <coughs> or we'd also entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution to adopt ordinance amending the city zoning map. I'll support. Councilmember King? <coughs> yes. Shippers? Yes. Ellenboss? Yes. Ingalls? Mayor Falcons? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Then that'll take us to communications for this evening, Sandy. This is being... Um, the request is to approve the closure of Lake Street between Harris and Cass from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. on September 4th, 2021 for the Cadillac Festival of Races. It's nice to see it back. So I'll make a motion to approve the closure of Lake Street between Harris Street and Cass Street from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. on September 4th, 2021 for the Cadillac Festival of Races. I'll support that. Councilmember Shippers? Yes. Ellen Boss? Yes. Ingalls? King? Yes. Mayor Focus? Yes. Motion carries. It's also being requested to approve the closure of Lake Street between Harris and Cass on August 20th to the 22nd, 2021, at the times noted for the call to all community event. Um, it looks like everything is the same as it was the last time this event was held. In the time before. In the time before. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Would someone like to make that motion? Sure, unless does Judy want to say anything about it? We're just grateful that we Can you come up to the microphone, please? <laughs> Put her on the spot. Judy Coffey, I'm part of the planning team for this event. Uh, we're just grateful that uh, we have this marvelous area to use. Uh, it's in real heavy use that weekend. There's a, a, a jewelry show all three days uh, of that weekend in the park, which we're kind of excited about. Um, and uh, we're going to utilize the pavilion. And then on Saturday from noon to 4, uh, Bonnie Forbes' granddaughter is hosting a um, um, time of memory and celebration for her grandmother, uh, who was the former director of, of uh, the Council on Aging here in Cadillac. It's a lot of stuff going on in the park <laughs> that weekend. <laughs> so thank you for your consideration of this. And uh, we're just going to use the pavilion. We're not going to try to put a tent up this year. Thanks be to God. Last year, we <laughs> someone went and picked a tent up, and half the poles weren't there. or They weren't the right size. And, 
I thought those two young men were going to lose their sanity. And they were pretty smart guys, and they were having a terrible time. So I'd get the high ones here, and then the middle, it was, you know, it was almost on the ground. So they, they folded that one up. So basically, just use of the pavilion. And, uh, and Judy, um, if I may, um, you're going to close, ask for the street to be closed off too, correct? Yes. And there... <coughs> All the times are listed. I copied this right off yes, here. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I, I I'm sorry I didn't type it. I, I was right. so embarrassed when I saw my writing. <laughs> no, you're okay. Um, one thing that I would like to mention, though, as um, you all prepare for this uh, event, mm -hmm. is to remind people that the street is closed off, but people are not supposed to be yeah. parking in there. And we have D our good friend Tim Dewey is in charge of that not okay. happening. <laughs> Yeah, just so and that there's no problems and people can yeah. feel free to walk through there. And we will not uh, set anything on fire. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You would be surprised how, it was it two years ago, they, they couldn't understand why we had to go over to First Baptist to grill the hot dogs. And um, I kept saying, we, we, we can't do that. And, and, well, there's no reason we can't do that. Well, there's a thing right here. Why can't we do that? I said, because my signature is on this, and you're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's why we love you. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the closure of Lake Street between Harris Street and Cass Street from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. on September 4th. Oh, no, I'm wrong. I'm down one. Um, I, I'll make a motion to approve the closure of Lake Street between Harris and Cass on August 20th through 22nd, 2021, at the times noted for the call to all community event. I'll second it. Councilmember Allenbass? Yes. Ingalls? King? Yes. Shippers? Yes. Mayor Fokens? Yes. Motion carries. See the city manager's report. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Mayor and members of the City Council. Uh, brief report tonight. Uh, the only item is with respect to uh, recommendations coming from the Maple Hill Cem Cemetery Board in regard to uh, making adjustments to their current rate structure. Uh, as you'll notice in the council communication, um, it lists the current rates along with the proposed rates. It also provides uh, a secondary page that justifies uh, the, the changes. Uh, that are being proposed uh, for council to consider uh, this uh, this evening and the recommendation this evening uh, uh, following the unanimous approval from the Maple Hill Cemetery Board uh, is to approve the recommendations uh, that are presented within your packet. Also just as an aside one of our council members as everyone knows council member Ellen Boss is uh, the city appointed uh, one of the city appointed board members to that board as well uh, which is great to have that synergy. So. Yeah, I just, and the rates haven't been raised in quite a while, five years, yeah. unlike our water and sewer rates. I had to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is, uh, winter rates are going up. The summer rates have stayed the same. And um, the Sunday and holiday rate is going up. And it's very unusual to find a, a cemetery in Michigan that will bury on a Sunday. Will inter on Sundays. It's very rare. It's very, uh, it's, uh, outstanding that Gabe and Ken will do that on a Sunday or a holiday. It's uh, unusual. I would, it's been five years since they've gone up. It doesn't affect the summer rates at all, so I'd highly recommend this. The cost of everything's going up. The machinery used, the people using the machinery. So this is, uh, this is uh, acceptable. Okay. So I would make a motion to Approve the recommendations of the Maple Hill Cemetery Board regarding cemetery rates. And I'll support that. Councilmember Ingalls, King? Yes. Shippers? Yes. Ellen Bus? Yes. Mayor Falkins? Yes. Motion carries. This evening we do have in our packets the minutes and uh, report from the zone, last Zoning Board of Appeals meeting that we can just review at our leisure. Uh, so at this time, we'll open the floor for our second public comment this evening. No pressure. Seeing no one, we'll close public comment and move to the good of the order. If anyone has anything this evening. All quiet. Not much. Well, the Youth Council... We rescheduled and did the movie on Friday night, and I want to oh. thank staff 
and for helping make that happen and especially Owen who did a lot of wrangling to get us to there. Um, we want to thank the sponsors of the movie and also um, there's another potential sponsor. So Wonderful. we'll be meeting again um, third Wednesday of the month to look at what, uh, what we're what we'd like to do moving forward. And I'd also like to say, as our members, have gra some of our members have graduated and are moving on to college, that if you are a, or know of a um, youth in the Cadillac area that either lives in or goes to school in Cadillac, um, and if they would like to get involved in some community in, in the Cadillac Mayor's Youth Council, it, it operates just like City Council where we have a youth mayor and we have council members and it's a way to give voice to the young people in the community and um, help teach them the process of engaging the community in activities that are aimed toward the youth in the community. So if you know of anyone who would be interested in that, there are applications on the city website and uh, information there as well. So please spread the word. Thank you. Um, I would like to just take the opportunity um, to uh, share with the council, and then I also had mentioned it to Marcus, but when we had the main break uh, in the city, um, I just wanted to uh, commend the, um, the staff out at the wastewater treatment plant. They were really amazing and wonderful and compassionate and kind to uh, the people who came through to get water. And I just watched them in action. Their whole day was turned upside down. They took it in stride and they were just so kind and helpful with people. And I don't want to miss the opportunity to say thank you for that. Thank you. So you're welcome. Okay, anything else? No? Okay, then we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Nice Thank to you see everybody. everybody. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, good to see everybody. Oh, I hear.